welcome back friends welcome to another video lecture from Shomu's biology and in this difference video series I'll be talking about the difference between miRNA siRNA and shRNA now in the first phase miRNA is microRNA siRNA is short interference RNA or interfering RNA shRNA is short hairpin RNA now among them in a generalized sense the difference between miRNA and siRNA is something which will be required to know while the shRNA functionality and the processing process is more or less similar with the siRNA so if you know the difference between miRNA and siRNA that will be very important and this is one of the most requested videos so here we go let me take a color first it's already taken so let's start talking about this three so here I draw the different scheme for miRNA, siRNA and shRNA. We begin with the miRNA. miRNA precursor is a 70 nucleotide long shRNA or double stranded RNA. It could be the precursor for mRNA. For siRNA, the precursor for is long double stranded RNA. For miRNA, there is imperfect pairing required. You know all this type of interfering RNAs, these are ultimately the RNA who, ul who ultimately go and destroy a double stranded RNA. Figure out a specific region of the RNA, destroy that RNA which is a target for this RNAs. So all this RNA interference work like these are all RNA itself but they will go and bind with a target RNA and target RNA will be cleaved so that the process of protein synthesis is not possible. Okay. Now all of them forms that functionality but the degree at which they form the func functionality and the process and the mechanism by which they are doing the functionality is a little bit different. So in miRNA that binding you know all of they require is to bind with the target RNA. Let us say this is the target RNA we are talking about. Let me take another color that is green which is the miRNA. Now the pairing required here, the pairing homology, not actually homology, the, the pairing complementarity should be required to bind with the target RNA. Now the complementarity here is not much perfect. They do not need a perfect complementary to interact with the target DNA and destroy it. Some imperfect pairing like almost like in, in, a, in a stretch of 10 nucleotide, if they bind with almost 4 to 5 nucleotide, that will be enough for this miRNA to break down the target RNA. While in siRNA, siRNA requires a perfect binding with the target RNA prior to the destruction. Okay? The function of miRNA is the cleavage of the target mRNA, while the function of siRNA is the cleavage of the target RNA where they are originated from. But miRNA can cleave the target of different regions and sometimes they also prevent this process of degradation depending upon the cell's behavior and what the cell is destined to do. But siRNA will always destroy the target DNA or target RNA sorry. The structure if you look very carefully and the, and the sequence of miRNA if you study very carefully you will find that it is very much conserved in the recent species and related organisms. But in siRNA, it is not conserved. The sequence varies uh, with the related organism's body. Now, miRNA is encoded by its own genes of that organism, right? So, if you talk about the miRNA that is present in our body as humans, all those miRNAs are generated from the own body genes and own genes of our body. While in siRNA can be generated by some other foreign elements. For example, viruses can contribute to the siRNA, transposons can contribute to the siRNA. Now if we look at shRNA, I have not talked about yet because I told you shRNA processing is very similar to the siRNA. So if you know the difference between mI and siRNA, you know the process a little bit for the sh as well. Now we will see the mechanism with which miRNA and siRNA activates. This is a process of miRNA activation. It begins with the gene. So remember, long uh, double-stranded RNA that is present there. 
Now it may also form this hairpin like structures. From this hairpin like structures if they form they require specific protein known as drosha and pasha. They start, start to break down or cleave some part of this other element to form what is known as pre miRNA. At the beginning when they form the stem loop from the double stranded uh, structure or the form of stem loop of as a secondary structure of RNA known as pri miRNA, binding of drosha will cleave this pri miRNA into pre miRNA. Now once we get the pre miRNA still the loop is present but for the processing of the miRNA we need to cut this loop out and who does that? Re Dicer is a molecule that cleave that loop out but before cleaving that loop out this RNA should be transported into the cytosol because all the process of the pre miRNA type is conducted in the nucleus. Once the pre miRNA is made then it is transported into the cytosol where Dicer actually cleaves that loop from the pre miRNA. After this cleavage we only get two strand of the RNA so it's a double stranded RNA. Now this double stranded RNA is known as miRNA miRNA star duplex. One of those strand becomes the strand called guide RNA which will be interacting. In this picture this one is the guide which will be interacting and pairing with the target RNA to destroy it and then it will involve with some more ribonucleoproteins and then finally involve with the target RNA and destroy that. That is the process of miRNA. For process of siRNA it starts with a long double stranded RNA or it can also start with shRNA. shRNA can be produced easily or actually if there is an shRNA it can be easily converted into siRNA by a single step that is the cleavage of the loop with the help of dicer. So if you look at for the miRNA the whole process starts with nucleus and then the processing goes on in the cytosol. But for siRNA the process is there in the cytosol itself because the process of miRNA begins from our own gene remember. So miRNA is generated from our own gene these are our own body gene from where we generate the miRNA. But for siRNA it can be injected it might be inserted by viruses or transposons or any elements from outside. So here the siRNA is generated or shRNA. If there is shRNA it is nothing but a short hairpin RNA where we have a double stranded linkage and some, some part will be like, uh, uh, like bulges or loop like things formed. So if we have this structure dicer will ultimately cleave this loop out so we get the siRNA complex. Now you see it is more or less similar from the process that start from here to this region. So siRNA resembles some part of the process of miRNA processing that occurs in cytosol. So once it dicer cleaves the loop out we have a double stranded si duplex and the si duplex is then attached with other proteins known as argonaut and other molecules they form a complex known as risk. Okay. RNA interference mediated silencing complex and once this risk is formed then it will start to guide one of the strands because that will act as a guide strand of the RNA interact with the target D RNA this is the target RNA and this is the guide RNA. So guide RNA interacts with the target RNA and the process is the same it will break down the target RNA. In case of shRNA it is nothing much difference because if you have a shRNA it could be easily converted into a pre miRNA or shRNA with the help of enzyme known as drosha. Drosha will cleave some part of this hairpin RNA and the part will be then converted into either pre miRNA or shRNA. Whatever of this RNA will be made then it will be transported into the cytosol and the processing will be very same like the siRNA processing. Okay? So that is the three different types of RNA interference and their differences. I hope this video helped you to understand about the difference between miRNA, siRNA and shRNA. If you like this video please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to get more video like that and share this video with your friends. 
thank you